Welcome to Google I.O. Thank you for joining us. We are at an important inflection point in computing, and it's exciting to be driving technology forward. And we are excited about how we can approach our mission with renewed vigor, thanks to the progress we see in AI. Healthcare is one of the most important fields AI is going to transform. But if you go and analyze over 100,000 data points per patient, more than any single doctor could analyze, we can actually quantitatively predict the chance of readmission 24 to 48 hours before, earlier than traditional methods. It gives doctors more time to act. Another example of a, one of our core products, which we are redesigning with AI, is Gmail. We call it Smart Compose. So as the name suggests, we use machine learning to start suggesting phrases for you as you type. All you need to do is to hit tab and keep auto-completing. We are rolling out Smart Compose to all our users this month and hope you enjoy using it as well. So we are bringing a new feature called Suggested Actions. Say, for example, you went to a wedding and you're looking through those pictures. We understand your friend Lisa is in the picture and we offer to share the three photos with Lisa and with one click, those photos can be sent to her. By the way, AI can also deliver unexpected moments. So for example, if you have this picture, cute picture of your kid, we can make it better. We can drop the background color, pop the color, and make the kid even cuter. Or if you happen to have a very special memory, something in black and white, maybe of your mother and grandmother, we can recreate that moment in color and, and make that moment even more real and special. All these features are going to be rolling out to Google Photos users in the next couple of months. And today, I'm excited to announce our next generation, TPU 3.0. These chips are so powerful that for the first time, we've had to introduce liquid cooling in our data centers. So we've worked hard with WaveNet, and we are adding, as of today, six new voices to the Google Assistant. Let's have them say hello. Good morning, everyone. I'm your Google Assistant. Welcome to Shoreline Amphitheater. We hope you'll enjoy Google I.O. Back to you, Sundar. Let's be honest, it gets a little annoying to say, hey, Google, every time I want to get my assistant's attention. Now you won't have to say, hey, Google, every time. We call this continued conversation, and it's been a top feature request. Are kids learning to be bossy and demanding when they can just say, hey, Google, to ask for anything they need? Now, we've been consulting with families and child development experts, and we plan to offer Pretty Please as an option for families later this year. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. How can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing is the Assistant can actually understand the nuances of conversation. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. By the way, when we are done, the assistant can give you a confirmation notification saying your appointment has been taken care of. We gave you an early look at our new smart displays at CES in January. We're working with some of the best consumer electronic brands and today, I'm excited to announce that the first smart displays will go on sale in July. From staying in touch with family with broadcasts and duo video calling, to keeping an eye on your home with all of our other smart home partners, to seeing in advance what the morning commute's like with Google Maps, we're thoughtfully integrating the best of Google and working with developers and partners all around the world to bring voice and visuals together in a completely new way for the home. With the new Google News, we set out to help you do three things. First, keep up with the news you care about. Second, understand the full story. And finally, enjoy and support the sources you love. We're rolling out on Android, iOS, and the web in 127 countries starting today. 
Android P. AI underpins the first of three themes in this release, which are intelligence, simplicity, and digital well-being. With Android P, we partnered with DeepMind to work on a new feature we call Adaptive Battery. It's designed to give you a more consistent battery experience. And then with this understanding, the operating system adapts to your usage patterns so that it spends battery only on the apps and services that you care about. Adaptive Brightness learns how you like to set the brightness slider, given the ambient lighting, and then does it for you in a power-efficient way. With Android P, we're going beyond simply predicting the next app to launch to predicting the next action you want to take. We call this feature App Actions. Slices are a new API for developers to define interactive snippets of their app UI that can be surfaced in different places in the OS. If I type Lyft into the Google search app, I now see a slice from the Lyft app installed on my phone. Lyft is using the Slice API's rich array of UI templates to render a slice of their app in the context of search. And then Lyft is able to give me the price for my trip to work, and the slice is interactive, so I can order the ride directly from it. Pretty nice. I'm really excited to announce MLKit, a new set of APIs available through Firebase. With MLKit, you get on-device APIs to text recognition, face detection, image labeling, and a lot more. And MLKit also supports the ability to tap into Google's cloud-based ML technologies. We think we can help users with their digital well-being in four ways. We want to help you understand your habits, focus on what matters, switch off when you need to, and above all, find balance with your family. In Android, we're actually give you, going to give you full visibility into how you're spending your time, the apps where you're spending your time, the number of times you unlocked your phone on a given day, the number of notifications you got, and we're going to really help you deal with this better. Android P will show you a dashboard of how you're spending time on your device. We're making improvements to do not disturb mode, to silence not just the phone calls and texts, but also the visual interruptions that pop up on your screen. We've created a new gesture that we've affectionately codenamed Shush. If you turn your phone over on the table, it automatically enters Do Not Disturb, so you can focus on being present. No pings, vibrations, or other distractions. Android P will help you set up a list of contacts that can always get through to you with a phone call, even if Do Not Disturb is turned on. So we created wind down mode. You can tell the Google Assistant what time you aim to go to bed, and when that time arrives, it will switch on Do Not Disturb and fade the screen to grayscale. Well, today, we're announcing Android P Beta. And with efforts in Android Oreo to make OS upgrades easier, Android P Beta is available on Google Pixel and seven more manufacturer flagship devices today. Maps was built to assist everyone wherever they are in the world. We're now able to automatically add new addresses, businesses, and buildings that we extract from street view and satellite imagery directly to the map. This is critical in rural areas, in places without formal addresses, and in fast-changing cities like Lagos here, where we've literally changed the face of the map in the last few years. We're adding a new tab to Maps called For You. It's designed to tell you what you need to know about the neighborhoods you care about, new places that are opening, what's trending now, and personal recommendations. We've created a score called Your Match to help you find more places that you'll love. Your Match uses machine learning to combine what Google knows about hundreds of millions of places with the information that I've added, restaurants I've rated, cuisines I've liked, and places that I've been to. Share the list with your friends to get their input, too. You can easily share with just a couple of taps on any platform that you prefer. Then, my friends can add more places if they want to, or just vote with one simple click, so we can quickly choose a group favorite. So now, instead of copying and pasting a bunch of links and sending text back and forth, decisions can be quick, easy, and fun. What if the cameras can help us answer questions? Questions like, where am I going? Or what's that in front of me? Our teams have been working really hard to combine the power of the camera, the computer vision, with street view and maps, to reimagine walking navigation. You can start to see nearby places, so you see what's around you. 
And just for fun, our team's been playing with an idea of adding a helpful guide like that there so that it can show you the way. VPS, Visual Positioning System, that can estimate precise positioning and orientation. But we think the camera can also help you do more with what you see. That's why we started working on Google Lens. Oh, that cute dog in the park, that's a Labradoodle. Lens can now recognize and understand words. With smart text selection, you can now connect the words you see with the answers and actions you need. So you can do things like copy and paste from the real world directly into your phone. The next feature I want to talk about is called Style Match. And the idea is this. Sometimes your question is not, oh, what's that exact thing? Instead, your question is, what are things like it? You're at your friend's place, you check out this trendy looking lamp, and you want to know things that match that style. And now Lens can help you. So the last thing I want to tell you about today is how we're making Lens work in real time. So as you saw in the style match example, you start to see, you open the camera, and you start to see Lens surface proactively all the information instantly. And it even anchors that information to the things that you see. But we're very excited that starting next week, Lens will be integrated right inside the camera app on the Pixel, the new LG G7, and a lot more devices. Today, Waymo is the only company in the world with a fleet of fully self-driving cars with no one in the driver's seat on public roads. Phoenix will be the first stop for Waymo's driverless transportation service, which is launching later this year. Soon, everyone will be able to call Waymo using our app, and a fully self-driving car will pull up with no one in the driver's seat to whisk them away to their destination. And within a matter of months, we reduce the error rate for detecting pedestrians by 100x. That's right, not 100%, but 100 times. Now at Waymo, AI touches every part of our system, from perception to prediction to decision-making to mapping and so much more. Now, to be a capable and safe driver, our cars need a deep semantic understanding of the world around them. Our vehicles need to understand and classify objects, interpret their movements, reason about intent, and predict what they will do in the future. And today, I want to tell you about two areas where AI has made a huge impact, perception and prediction. Uh, traditionally, in computer vision, neural networks are used just on camera images and video. But our cars have a lot more than just cameras. We also have lasers to measure distance and shapes of objects, and radars to measure their speed. And by applying machine learning to this combination of sensor data, we can accurately detect pedestrians in all forms in real time. Our fleet has self-driven more than 6 million miles on public roads. And at Waymo, we use the TensorFlow ecosystem and Google's data centers, including TPUs, to train our neural networks. And with TPUs, we can now train our nets up to 15 times more efficiently. And we can't wait to make our self-driving cars available to more people, moving us closer to a future where roads are safer, easier, and more accessible for everyone. Thanks, everyone. It's a great reminder of how AI can play a role in helping people in new ways all the time.